Well, good morning everybody. Sorry about the slight delay, just a little technical hitch, but lovely to see you all. Um, especially as today is often known as Low Sunday, Sunday after Easter, just like the Sunday after Christmas. Um, but lovely to see you all, those of you here in person and those of you at home. Thank you for joining us this morning. So, just a few notices. Excuse me just a moment. <coughs> Frog in the throat today. Um, this evening there is an even song at 6.30 which everybody is welcome to. And uh, just to, you, you saw up here, our pop-up sales are coming, uh, pop-up stores coming up, but also can you be bringing in any paperback books, please, for our bake and book sale on Monday the 6th of May. Next week is epic for anybody in years five to eight. And then please do join us for a beetle drive on Saturday, April the 20th and you are obviously very welcome also to the APCM and please just make note of uh, the notice there about being on the electoral roll if you wish. Now <clears throat> I always find it an absolute honour to be able to do bands of marriage but today it's even more special because it's my son. So, I published the bands of marriage between Benjamin James Southgate and Jessica Clare Prestige, both of the parish of St. Francis Silverend, Essex, and by way of connection with this parish. This is for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. So, let us pray for them. Dear God, we thank you that you have brought Ben and Jessica together. We thank you, Lord God, that they wish to marry in your presence in this place. We pray as they continue to organise their wedding that you will come closer to them and bless them in these weeks ahead and on the day itself and in the years to come. We ask you this in your name. Amen. And so, <clears throat> we are still in the Easter season. And so we say, welcome in the name of Christ, God's grace, mercy and peace be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to stand to sing our first Easter hymn, See What a Morning.
seated or kneeling as we come to God in prayer. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you to say sorry for the things we have done wrong and for the good things we have not done for you and for others. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, help us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the collect for today. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as forgiven people, because Jesus is our Saviour, we're going to stand to sing now, My Jesus, My Saviour. Oh, there is no 
Please be seated and just wait for the music group to go and be seated as well. Just to say, yes, it is just me this morning. Uh, Dawn is at either the Vine Baptist or the VEC this morning um, on behalf of um, the SAYT, uh, Seven Oaks Area Youth Trust. She's just speaking to them this morning. So I'm just going to uh, remind us all about what has been happening, as it were, in the Easter story. And it starts back at Palm Sunday, two Sundays ago now, two weeks ago. And then we have, during the week, the uh, clearing of the temple, we think on the Monday, but then Jesus almost every day goes into Jerusalem. Don't forget, he was staying outside, quite likely at Bethany. And um, then during the week, he had many altercations, shall we put it that way, with the Jewish religious leaders. And then we come to Thursday night. And you know that on the Thursday, it was a Passover, great Jewish celebration of being freed from slavery. God led the Egyptians, uh, the slaves, out of Egypt to go back to the promised land. A great time for Jewish people, even today. It is a really important celebration for them. But of course, Jesus' heart was troubled. He knew what was going to happen. And they go out to the Garden of Gethsemane late at night after the Passover meal. And of course, there he is arrested. And then during the night, put on trial four times, not just once, but four times, in front of the high priest, Herod, Pilate. And then nine o'clock in the morning, he is nailed to the cross. And then there is the darkness between midday and three o'clock in the afternoon when he died. I want you just to be thinking about if you had been there, if we had been there, whether you might want to think about what it was like for one of his followers, one of his disciples or whether you might want to think what it might have been like to be on the periphery. Maybe you were there on Good Friday, oh, sorry, on Palm Sunday, welcoming this person in, not on a horse, but on a colt of a donkey. A bit weird. Just watching things that were going on. Real ups and downs. Um, when we were doing the Lent course, I said to those, um, those of us who met together on Zoom, you get a real sense, especially if you read John's Gospel, of the turbulent time it was emotionally for Jesus, knowing what was going to happen and realizing that people might have been singing Hosanna and Hallelujah and talking about uh, him as being the Messiah, hoping that he was the Messiah on Palm Sunday and then gets to Good Friday and hearing people shouting, crucify him. So on the Saturday, can you imagine the darkness that that must have felt like emotionally, spiritually for all of them. And then that wonderful Easter morning. So last Sunday, we celebrated Easter morning. The women came to the tomb and saw it opened. But Mary stayed behind and Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. Just her. I find that really powerful. And then, of course, we, we do have uh, Peter and Andrew did then come, and we think, believe John, did then come. They didn't see Jesus, they just saw an angel. But then we have Jesus appearing to two people on the road to Emmaus. So, so far, only Mary 
and the two on the road to Emmaus have seen him. And then we come to today's reading. So if you'd like to turn with me uh, to page 1089, page 1089. So last week we had the beginning of chapter 20 up to verse 18. Today we're starting at verse 19. So it is that Easter day. So, verse 19. On the evening on that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, there's another week's break. So here we are on this week later, a week after Easter Sunday. Now, Thomas, called Didymus, which means twin, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put his finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. Sorry, that was on the same day. Now it's the week's break. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were still locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. If I could have the PowerPoint up. I don't believe it. Do you remember it? Some of us older ones, yes. We often say that, don't we? I don't believe it. Or can you believe it? We often say these things, don't we? But is seeing always believing? Um, I am... Hopefully this is going to work. I would just, uh, some of you will remember this. Now, I remember it, but can I just say to everybody, does anybody remember what year this was? Seven, okay. Nine years before I was born. But I still know the story. Who does rem know this story? Yeah. Um, basically, to the younger ones, this appeared on the BBC on April Fool's Day, uh, back in 1957, it has been colorized, by the way, um, the picture, 1957. And in those days, younger ones, 
Um, there wasn't a lot of pasta in Britain at the time. People didn't really know about pasta, spaghetti, and believe it or not, the BBC managed to persuade people that pasta grew on trees. And they had these lovely Italian women uh, picking, oh, and a man, sorry, picking pasta from the trees. And people fell for it. Well, just coming up just a little bit further, now, I don't know whether this will work. Can we see if the video will work, please? Sorry, I should have... Uh, it might not work. Now, I absolutely fell for this one, okay? Do people remember this one? This was in 2008, I think it was. I was standing in our dining room... Uh, on a Saturday morning, I think it was, or whenever it was, and I shouted to Ben. I said, Ben, come in and look at this. This is amazing. And he came in and said, Mum, Rooney, no, it's not going to work. Don't worry. Will it? Ooh. Okay, so this guy was basically telling us yeah, I should have known just by him because he always did funny stories anyway, didn't he? But, you know, it, it was just incredible. I can remember watching it and thinking, oh, wow. No, 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 no. Yay! Yay! And they're off! <laughs> Wasn't that just absolutely incredible? Um, sorry, there's another video coming up in two slides time. So there we go, the flying penguins folk. Um, yeah, I fell for it. <laughs> but there we go. So, um, but is seeing believing? Well, I know, you know, um, <laughs> I can't believe I was taken in from that, but you know, it was quite, it was so believable, wasn't it? I loved how they were, you know, got them jumping. And <laughs> anyway, but I'm just going to show you a few other, uh, other, says me. I'm going to show you some natural wonders of the world. Um, here we go. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this. Anybody been to this in Australia? This is Lake Hillier in Western Australia. Looks like something out of Barber Fever Dream. Yeah, the pink hue of its water is a result of its massively high concentration of salt. Isn't that incredible? Compared to the sea beyond it. Pink. Now, if somebody had said to me, oh, a pink lake. Okay. I know we, um, quite near us on the way to Rochester, there's that very blue lake, isn't there? Turquoisey lake um, in an old mine. <laughs> But look at that. Okay, this is the next video. Now, this is in uh, Colombia. Oh, you always have to have a little ad first, don't you? Okay, there we go. Now, again, this is just incredible. Look at the colours in this river. Pinks, yellows, there are blues, there are greens. It is absolutely just beautiful. yellow just just incredible and uh, thank you that's fine thank you very much um, and basically there is a particular um, plant that makes the pink oh there we go and this that's quite all right that's absolutely fine but isn't this just beautiful and I have heard I have seen about this before on television I don't know if other people have and I could have gone on and on. There are those b amazing rainbow mountains in, I think, Chile in South America, but also in China. 
where the different strata of the rock is very, very different colour, and they are just beautiful. In the Amazon, there is a river that is so hot. I know the Amazon is hot anyway, but there is a river that is so hot you cannot get into it. These things are unbelievable. I've used the word. Yeah? And there are probably many other things that we find unbelievable. But we are today thinking about poor Thomas. Yep. And uh, I say poor Thomas because he wasn't there. Now, those of you who were here last week will have heard Ian saying to us, well, those two on the road to Emmaus, they didn't recognize Jesus. Mary didn't recognize Jesus. Would we recognize Jesus if he walked in today? I don't think we would, would we? No. And especially, as Ian told us, reminded us last week, if you have seen this man dead on the cross, his body taken down, dead from the cross, and put in a tomb, and after all that had happened to him, all the torture, all the bad things that had happened to his body, having not eaten since Thursday evening, to then see him stand in front of you, well, it's, of course it's unbelievable. And there are people in the world who will say, no, oh, well, he didn't really die. Maybe he didn't die, maybe he was just in a coma. To then be standing up in front of people and eating and walking around Jerusalem to Emmaus after a coma, after all those injuries, mm -mm. Oh, well, then maybe he didn't really come back to life. Some people say it was just a spiritual experience for the uh, disciples. We'll go into that in a bit more. So what does Jesus do? So in that first part of the passage that we read, first of all, he says, and I think it's lovely that Jesus says, peace be with you three times. And then, can you notice that in that first passage, he shows them his hands and his side, all the other disciples. Now, why did he need to do that? Because they might not have believed it was him. So they had to see to believe it, didn't they? So we really do need to stop having a go at poor Thomas. I don't like calling him Doubting Thomas. Those disciples... Those men did not believe Mary when she told them, even when the angels told them. They, weren't, they didn't really believe it, did they? And then what does Jesus say to them? Jesus then says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Okay, so he's just come back to life, yes? He says, peace be with you, after all the turbulence of the last week, two weeks for Thomas, peace be with you, but now you need to go out. Now you need to go. Whoa. Well. They didn't get it though, did they? It took them a few days, it took them actually another 50, uh, 40 days, 50 days, till ascension, <laughs> yes, for them to realise what he meant. But he doesn't send them alone. We are not alone. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So then we get to Thomas. Now, this is, oh, sorry. There we go. This is a very famous painting. In some ways, I'm quite pleased that you can't see it too closely. Um, it is very very um, lifelike. Thomas really has his finger in Jesus' side here. I don't know that he would have actually done that. Would he? But again, Jesus says, peace be with you. They're probably still trying to process all these emotions that they've had the amazingness of Palm Sunday. Yeah, he's going to do it. He's going to do something amazing. And then, oh, Good Friday, Saturday. Oh, 
oh, Sunday, whoa, he's here, he's here. And then Thomas. And so Jesus again says the same thing to Thomas that he said to the other disciples. Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. And then what is Thomas's... Sorry, this is not... <laughs> thank you. And the last one, please. Uh, thank you. Now, the other disciples didn't say this. Only Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And so, folks, we really do need to think about how much we actually believe this. Because, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, which is just such an amazing chapter, he says, because he's writing to some Corinthians, and some of the Corinthians are some of those people who don't actually believe that Jesus died and came back to life. Certainly the coming back to life bit. And Paul basically says to them, do you know what? If Jesus didn't come back to life, what do you believe in? There's nothing to believe in. A man died, a very, very lovely man, did some amazing things, but he died, yeah. What's there to believe in? There's lots of people in the world who do wonderful, lovely things for people, who are amazing people. But if Jesus did not come back to life, then we have no faith. And so I want to finish with those last few verses. Oh, whoops. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book, John tells us. But these, and John's gospel is written very differently to the other three gospels. John chooses his stories very carefully and he's chosen these to write down so that we may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, is the Son of God, and that by believing, we may have life in his name. Amen? I've got one or two. So, what about us folk? Jesus still says, peace be with you. We live in a very turbulent world. But God's peace is with us. We need to believe, otherwise there is no faith. And because we believe, we have life in his name. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit but then there's that challenge. What did Jesus say to his disciples? Go, I am sending you. And so that is the challenge of Easter for us too, that we should go in the power of the Holy Spirit to tell people of this wonderful, unbelievable, but that's what faith is all about, isn't it? When I get when people say to me, oh, but you can't believe, how? How could he have come back to life? Isn't that the point? That's the whole point. He is God. And the whole point is that he became one of us. He died on that cross for us so that we can have faith, have the Holy Spirit, and have eternal life. I'm going to say amen again, okay? One, two, three. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, folk, because we believe, we are now going to stand to say the words that we believe. Let us stand to say, let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, 
who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we remain standing now to sing our next song, which we haven't sung for a, a long time, but is a wonderful <coughs> Easter hymn reminding us of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. He chose the cross for us. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. So let us start by thanking God for his goodness. On this Sunday, we remember Thomas. Sometimes, Lord God, we feel 
left out. We feel maybe that we have missed something. But God, we thank you that we can be assured that we are missing nothing now. That you chose the cross for us. That you rose again for us. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your all-loving goodness to us. Amen. We live in a very turbulent world, as I said, but Jesus brings peace. On this day, when there are peace talks again in Egypt, we pray, Lord God, that there will be compromises, that peace will be restored in the Middle East. We also pray, Lord God, for peace in the Ukraine, for peace in the Yemen, in Sudan, in the DRC, in the Central African Republic and in all the other places in this world, Lord God, where there is hatred and war, where there are power struggles. Lord God, we pray for your peace in these areas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our community. We thank you, Lord God, that we live in this wonderful part of this amazing country. Lord God, not everybody in our community knows you as their saviour. Not everybody believes. And you have called us to go. You call us to go to tell others of your love for them. We pray, Lord God, that in our lives, individually, but also as your church, here at St. Bartholomew's, that we, with the other churches in this village, may show forth and declare your love for others, that they may come to believe in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for the vacancy, as our profile has now been sent out and is available for anybody who is interested. Lord Jesus, we know you have plans for our parish and we trust that those plans are good. Wise Holy Spirit, guide those who are seeking the right person to be our next vicar and those who are seeking the right next steps in their ministry to become our vicar. Together we, may we discern your way for the future and be further equipped to grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now bring before you, Lord God, those who need your presence with them, who need the peace of your presence with them. We pray especially for those who are unwell, including Rosemary Hull, Gareth Tucker, Christine Humphrey, Keith Howe, and Navdeep Singh Kondola. And we continue to pray for the families of David Hallam and Eunice Beasley as they grieve. 
Maybe in a moment of quiet, you would like to bring somebody else to God who needs his, their, his peace in their lives. Holy Spirit, come upon and amongst those who need you for healing in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we think about the week ahead, let us ask God for his blessing on all that we do. Lord God, you know what lies ahead for us. You know all the different things that are taking place here in the church building, the church centre. We pray, Lord God, your blessing on this evening's service. We pray for those who will be preparing for warm welcome and choir practice and the churchyard working party, the cameo, the epic. And we pray, Lord God, that you will walk with us just as you walked with those two on the road to Emmaus through this week, in all that we say and do. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. So let us gather all our thoughts and prayers together in the words Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we're going to sing our final hymn now which will also be the offering hymn we're going to stand to sing about the power of the cross let us stand
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord of life, you walk this journey with us and through us. Lead us, Lord, lead on. Journeying within and wrestling with the world, lead us, Lord, lead on. Lead us to risk, to grow, and to tread the path you have opened for us. Lead us, Lord, lead on. And let us rejoice that every place is your place. In the name of Christ, the risen one. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. And let us say together, may the love of the risen Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the risen Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the risen Jesus fill our hearts and souls. Amen. Alleluia. Let us go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.